Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Commodity Futures Report for Wednesday, December 15, and starting with iron ore. So we know this first move down through here, funnily enough, is uh, is in three waves. So it makes all of this corrective. It's not like we have five waves down here, it's three waves. So it makes all of this corrective. So that's why I don't think that we're in a bigger bear market with this situation just yet. It may get more complicated. All of this could just be an A wave and we go to the B wave and a C wave, but it's still corrective, which is good news in a way. So um, our problem here is that from the low, we've been called in the low, We've watched the first five waves go up, so we knew that after a correction, we'll get another five waves. So we've got this sort of five waves here, which has got a fair bit of form in it. And what I mean by that is that it's hard to see the five waves here. In this case, we can see that definition there. I still think, I haven't checked the intraday yet, but I think there's a little bit of a move to come in just here first. So we could have a top in and it could roll over from that point. I don't know how this is going to pan out. What I don't like about this move to the upside is the volume here that's divergent price goes up volume goes down that's divergence and uh not healthy um that said we can see that that strong bar to the upside here is on higher volume and the move down is on lower volume corrections are on lower volume so the sellers are not in control at that point but it is retesting the 650 here which is a positive thing and when you look at this here and the 650 as a line in the sand here you can see this is the first time that Look, it may not stay there and it may not push up, it could do anything, but it is the first time that it's actually, you know, been above the level and sat there and not come back down. Do you know what I mean? So it is progress. It's a little bit of progress. It's a very subtle thing, but it means a lot to me. So, um, but the volume is very haunting being so low, but uh, we'll just continue to work along with that and we'll see what we get. Um, we're long in resource stocks like BHP and uh, FMG. They're Australian stocks because I'm an, uh, an Aussie. Um, so I don't know stocks around the rest of the world that much uh, coming into the iron ore. Of course, I know, you know, Vale and so on, but um, I won't know the, the, the mining stocks in your uh, country. So that's that. Let's cruise on to gold. So with gold here, just on the... Um, on the bigger picture here so it's a two-day chart nothing special about two days um except that it's the weekend uh <laughs> it would be nice if we have three-day weekends that would be you know back in the day there were kids you know five and ten years old working in coal mines and doing these late shifts and and it's just that workload's just diminished off over time and one day we'll have that universal income for everybody i guess and uh be that good or bad i don't know but um anyway there we go i'd enjoy a three-day weekend it makes a bit more civil isn't it or work three days and have four days off that would be very civil <laughs> um the a the b the c the d <clears throat> and the e wave that's where we're at with this and we're looking we've got five waves down here so we've got five waves in the opposite direction of the trend because the previous trend was up. So that means if we get five waves in the opposite direction of the trend, we're going to have some sort of correction and we're going to have another five down. So we've always been looking down at 17. We could probably uh, adjust that to 17, 20 and so on. But as always, we just count the waves and that gives us the target that we need at the end of the day. So we're in the middle of the B wave here. So let's just go in and have a look at that on the four hour chart. I won't drill in any further than this, no need to be. The stochastics is still setting up on the downside here for this. So I'm thinking that we've got five waves here for the A wave, and then we've got five waves down here, basically. So I need to look at that as um, as impulsive, and then this is corrective as a B, and then, and then this one here as a C wave. So there's two things that can happen here. We can either have one, two, three, four, and five coming down here for, for, for that, coming back into the 1765 this time last time we we're looking for the 72 but in this so another move down here to finish that off uh, and then have a c wave up here coming back up into previous high over here for the b wave and then we go down for the c wave so an a wave and then an a and a b and a c for the b wave and then down the other point is that perhaps um that's all we're going to get and we're going to have that c wave in there and that b wave there it doesn't look and feel right to me it feels a bit small compared to the size of this structure here 
but anything's possible. So uh, with that in mind, then the move down here in five ways, we'll just see a rally back up in three and then head on down at that point and we'll start our move down. So it's not the time to buy gold stocks out there. And let's have a look at uh, silver. So this is our little structure over here. I can bring that over here, E-Wave of wave four. Looking at silver, we're looking for further downside on silver. There it is. So uh, we've got wave one and two here and three here and four here. This is a daily chart and then wave five to come down. So we need to take this low out here and we'll come down into the $20 mark. This is a CFD product here. So it's divided up into um, into the decimal points of 10. So that's why that's like that. But otherwise, yeah, so we're just looking for that to uh, to finish off into that space. And uh, what's next? Copper. So copper's just sort of still diminishing into that triangle pattern that we'd been uh, checking on high grade US copper. So wave three up here with an with an A, B, C, D and E. So it's very much like gold as well. So uh, yeah, look, I'm, to be honest, I'm not really quite sure about this. I don't know if wave B needs to go over here for this or or something else is occurring in here but it's not going anywhere and um, yeah we'll just wait it out so as i mentioned before i don't think this is going to be ready until after christmas and i think that the us dollar needs to top copper needs to finish its triangle pattern here and gold also the gold and copper will finish the same uh roughly speaking i'd imagine uh so i i don't know how this is going to I'm not quite sure about this little thing in here. I need to ponder it a little bit further. So, but anyway, nothing's cooking here for this market. And uh, crude oil. So with crude, um, well, we're with crude. Okay, so crude is very, I, I see crude very much the same as um, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ really because uh, well, you could count this down in, in a few different ways, but down for the A wave here, we were looking for the B wave to pull back up into, well, into the box here. Didn't quite get there. So I was looking at this as an A and a B and one, two, three, four, five here for the C of B, and then looking at this as one and two, and then working lower here. I think the thing here that you could go on if you wanted to uh, short this because because we're in a B wave here it could get a bit more complicated but if you wanted to short this then under this low here would be would be the go for that and this is also finding the $70 here as the retested resistance at that point but let me just go to the tick chart I just want to have a look if I've updated this here Okay, I've done a bit here. Let me just pull in a bit more data then. Let me have a look. Okay, there we go. So, yeah. Let me just have a look at this over here. It doesn't really give me five waves in this leg. That's a bit of a problem. But it does give me three waves in this one. So then we should have five here. So... Yeah, all I can say is 70 is the is the big kahuna here. So we need to, that's the number that we're working with. If that becomes the retested resistance, then we need to um, look on the short side there. That's an impulse wave there. So we're going to see further upside um, after we get some sort of little ABC pattern here. But how far that takes us is another question. So yeah, don't really have five waves in that move there. So that's a concern. Um, that's okay. That's an A and a B and a C here for that. So we could just label that while we're here so we don't need to go back over that again. Well, I suppose we could look at it as five waves, couldn't we? One, two, three, four, and five. Hmm. Bit of an overlap, bit of a spanner in the works. Does look impulsive on this side though. I think I'll just go with that for the for a while here just so I can get my bearings we've got one two three four five for that so we could just pop those in there for the minute so 
so that's that yeah this is a little bit haunting in here really because I, I wonder if you know i'm wondering if this b wave is not finished and we need to be over here for that you know but we are going to see stock and that move lower so that's i'll label it i'll label it um wave one here but i'm not that um not that happy with it i just want to see what it looks like Hmm, okay, so I'm just I'm going to swing to the bearish side here just for a moment for a little while. And then these five waves down here would make this just wave one here. Wave two would go over there and we'll have uh, bring these over here a bit further. Three, four, five. We could be looking at wave three down here. So if that... Um, if that becomes the resistance here then it should be quite a good short trade really so all of that said that leaves us at this point five waves down here it's already hit 50 percent so it won't go that high we can get rid of that and that i'll just put this in here sure about all of this here but if expect another move up here let's just assume that's going to happen then coming back down through here uh, we really just want to look for a classic trading levels pattern at that point and that's where the short trade would be you know coming through there how small that is is it yeah so That's five waves, so we could count that as one in here and two in here, and that would be the third. Just to, I mean, what this means is that it means that this other move back is corrective, so that means that from this low to this high, we won't be coming much further down because we're already at the 50 60 percent so it may we may have our abc already in that space there because i was just thinking it may get a bit more you know we could just get five waves up there and that's it we come down to that point or we can just move up halfway here come back down to here and then move up there so i'm a little bit unsure but it doesn't really matter at this point you want that um you want that first low below the level there to short and you want that number you know on the on the negative on the you know as resistance here and you just need to make sure that you get it you know get it right okay so anyway that's crude um natural gas hasn't really done anything it's just going into a little wave four from last time memory so we've been looking down from the top it may not be the case but uh down for one back for two one and two and one and two and three and coming back for four and then down for five so it looks like it's had its little rally there uh nothing really to see here at the moment um it's possible that we can have a wave c down here at this point um at this point rather uh, rather one and two and three and four and five here on this low here but not looking not looking good so um yeah still more downside to go on this so what's next uh, is nickel so we need to go to a different chart i should get that onto other charting program that's okay so as you may know we've been looking for the top of wave one here with an a wave a b wave and a c wave down here so we're just waiting for this to break down here hasn't come down just yet but we're just patiently waiting for it so nothing to see here if that top gets taken out here as i mentioned before we can go long i mean technically we could just drop that down to the next level here too so onto that high because any move above that would be above the 61.8 percent so that's you could do that um but i won't um but uh it's possible if you wanted to 
Um, and the other one is the uh, US dollar still rising. I've tried to have a bit of a look about, you know, because I, I, I mean, obviously inflation's uh, moving up, so that's uh, a part of it. And I was sort of curious to see how much USDT tether have, not just only tether, but um, uh, there's other ones out there as well. I can see that they're trading about seventy billion dollars worth, because um, all the tether out there is equal to the US dollar, and that means that they need to buy US dollar you know, to, or at least be in the bond market somewhere, or some have some asset that's related to a dollar for dollar um, in the crypto space. So I was still trying to figure that out. I've done a little bit of research, but not, not enough to um, tell you how it is, so to speak, at this point. Um, but anyway, as far as the count goes, um, we're looking at one and two, and one and two, one, two, three, four, third wave, fourth wave. So um, yeah, we've just been waiting for this to get off its lazy backside and get up there. Um, so yeah, we still need three, four, and five to, uh, to to get into this. So yeah, anyway, still further upside because I was thinking when gold tops out, bottoms out, then this will top out here, you know, and that would help it move in that in that particular way. We'll also, have have a look at um, at uh, the interest rates at that point as well. Okay, so I'll leave it all at that. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.